Hey folks, it's Brian and it's time for another Jeep video. Uh, this is my Jeep TJ build series. Uh, this is video number 83. And this project started with a totaled out Jeep that I bought from Copart about a year and a half ago. Uh, just now got it running. Uh, I'm doing some touch up and follow up. Uh, so stay tuned. We're gonna work on a bunch of different stuff today. Okay, so one of the things I wanna do is I wanna better secure some of these wires and I got some new anchors in so these are zip tie anchors and they literally just work this simple but I want to get this wire for the headlights just out of the way and that's all there is to it that just secures that uh, I've got a couple more of these to touch up next one is here for the uh, fog light um, fog lights that I don't have so we're gonna deal with that so to get this out of the way I just zip tied it up here and we're gonna actually do this correct today I think we're going to come in from the front and then I've got another one back here that needs to be dealt with Seems like no matter what I do, the light is right in my face. And not on the thing that I'm trying to see. There we go. So I'm going to do the back one first. We're just gonna pull this one and that should keep that up out of harm's way and then we'll clean this up the beautiful thing about these is real easy to cut them loose and replace them let's do the other side so found a little better place to mount the camera on this side and again we're just we're gonna come in here with that one. what that is supposed to be. Uh, I have to hunt around for that. In the meanwhile, I'm just going to zip tie it there. Um, it looks like it was connected recently, so 
Again, I don't know what it is yet. see anything and uh, just like the other side all right let me find my nippers So we're going to cut this one loose and recycle it. This really, I might bend that back so it doesn't get road debris in it. In fact, I think I'm going to do exactly that. one what I did on the other side is I put it in from the front and then bring it around here and tie it in which is what I'm gonna do here And that just ties that out of the way where nothing stupid can happen to it and that wraps up this particular uh, to-do item so my next problem is I have a hood alignment issue with my hinge so I'll bring this down I've taken the hinge off because I was about to drill, just redrill the fender and call it a day but I spotted something else going on so let me show you what's going on here let's bring this down so the problem is that when this is in its location it's you know the width of this off it needs to be further back and I notice this sticks out so when I look back here at my hinges I notice this hinge is bent back so this hinge is bent forward. So what I got to do is I got to figure out a way to bend this hinge back. And that's what I want to work on right this second. And I think I can just kind of manhandle it back there. It would be better if I could get something back on either side of these, but I, I don't have anything. Oh, that's trash too. That's left over, so throw that away. I don't have anything really I can get back here with, but I can get in here with a screwdriver. Jeep's going to be jacked up anyway. I stuck the screwdriver in too far. Oops. Um, getting there. Still sticking out too much. So let's see where we're at now. So we're still, you know, half the width of this. We were the full width. So we're, we're moving in the right direction. Let's see what else is going on here. 
Normally you can adjust where a hood falls. This doesn't seem to have a lot of adjustability. There might be some adjustability under the cowl. I'm not really going to take the cowl off. I am going to be careful with how much I stick this in though. That's much easier when you're not bending the towel. I feel stupid for that. That's something I should have spotted. But, you know, it's a trail Jeep. Now, we're probably close enough that we can just scoot this forward. Let's just see if we can make this work. I think that'll that's that's gonna be good enough. Uh, we've moved this hinge back, we've closed this gap. So let's let's just see where this goes. That that might be all that was needed. Uh, this side is a little backed up, so I need to move this side back just a hair as well. And hopefully that doesn't mess anything up. So that one's close to, as close to perfect as these get. Let me tighten this one down. slightly out of alignment but I think it's okay let me start it and see if it's jacking with the fan oh I don't have my fucking keys let me get that all right so the good news is it doesn't mess with the fan it doesn't change the clearance on the fan trout I'm not gonna run the Jeep for very long because it is in my garage and I don't feel like suffocating myself today. All right, so this is another little thing that needs to be dealt with. Uh, this should be turned. So I'm gonna see if I can fix that. And. This is off. That ain't gonna bend. Thought this would just bend back in place, but apparently not. So I'm just gonna have to tolerate this for a little bit longer until I figure out why um, and what's going on. We 
at least got a couple things off the agenda so far. Um, all right, so the next things that need to happen is I need to uh, pull a vacuum on the air conditioning system and I also need to jack up the vehicle and reset the um, front control arms because I don't think they're set correctly and it was causing me not to be able to get an axle in. So first things first, let's see if the axle even fits today. So I'm going to crawl under there and work on that. Okay, so let's see where this gets us today. So I don't have super high hopes for this. Yeah, it's still not fitting. It's it's like an inch off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack it up and I'm gonna detorque these and then set it back down and just see if this moves um, the other thing that needs to happen which I don't think is going to help the case is I need to move the axle this way so let me do it to it So we should be locked. That's where we are. We are up off. There's that part that's not supposed to be over here. Let me get some wrenches and I'll be back. All right, so I'm gonna loosen that bolt. And normally I don't recommend doing anything under a vehicle while it's on jacks, but in this particular case, I'm backed up by the tires. Um, so I'm not as worried about it. Let me get this uh, situated. weighted. figure out how I'm going to get over there. I don't 
see a nice way over in there. expecting to be on here quite this tight. Um. <sighs> wow. Let's see if this one's just as bad. torque wrenches but gosh this one's really tough Well, I see part of the problem, the jack is actually resting on, um, on it. So, yeah, there's just not really a lot of good places to pick this thing up. Son of a bitch. All right, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna undo the lower ones. Alright, 
that's good enough. So that noise indicates that we are free. both sides down and then I'm going to mess with this passenger side. Too much. I don't understand it. I don't trust it either. a nice way for me to do this without being under it and I don't like being under it. Well I guess I could do it from the outside bolt. the torque settings uh, and first I'm going to do the very scientific method of setting the suspension <sighs> 220 pounds applied liberally Uh, but that, that's going to set the suspension as good as anything. So let me go check the torque settings on it. 
be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the upper control arms as well because they have the same issue where they need to be tightened under the suspension load. So let me let me get these loose. there that is not the same size so let me get a wrench for that So this is a 15.
Now what we're going to do is we're going to jounce the vehicle. Control arms are 60 foot pounds, and the lower ones are 130. one while we're under here. need to be done from the front.
let's see if we get in here a little better from this angle. We get to do the lower control arms, which will be a bit pain in the ass. Let me find the socket for that and get the torque wrench set up. These go to 130 foot pounds. I thought I had one out already. Okay, so I'm going to do these from down here. Switch sides and do that one from the back. Thank <laughs> you. 
taking it. Ah, ouch. I hit my elbow. That hurt. So apparently it's a three quarter on the outside. I wonder if the inside is the same. Yes, it is. So let me get the proper size socket. is a driveway alignment and this has to be done with the vehicle running. So let me uh, pick up some of my toys and we'll get started on the driveway alignment. Well, might as well leave that open because it ain't going nowhere. sucks because it's a hundred and fuck that out.
So let me uh, gear up for that. Okay, first things first, I've got to loosen the track bar. It is a 15 millimeter socket. I have an adjustable track bar in here. It is not a double adjustable, which is probably going to be a pain in the ass, but here goes. This was a real pain in the ass to put in, and I'm anticipating that it will be a real pain in the ass to uh, remove and reinstall. I won't be the least bit surprised if this jumps when it comes out. wrench because that will speed this up. 13, 13, well, two 13s and a 14. What the fuck's a 15? I'll be back in a minute, guys. so bad. Alright, so now I gotta go ratchet and drag this fucking thing over where it's supposed to be. Alright, I'm gonna use a nice big 10,000 pound ratchet strap. It's really for cargo, but it'll work. Oh, um, well, actually it's a 3,000 pound ratchet strap. It's hard to freight. I mean, you wouldn't really expect something that looks like 10,000 pounds to actually handle 10,000 pounds now, would you? Ha ha ha. Not for life. So, the key to this is to attach it someplace solid, and the bracket that it goes to is a pretty safe bet. And then on the other side, I gotta attach it someplace solid as well. So I'm gonna use, uh, it needs to be someplace solid that is out of the way, and that's kind of the hard part. Um, Let's see. The problem is, 
this, if I put it there, I'm going to have absolute hell getting this in. bottom of the uh, ball joint because I know that can support the weight. All right, and now I just got to figure out which side of this gets pulled. All right, looks like I've got that answer. certainly compressing the spring. I don't know if it's pulling it over any. It is. Let me let me eyeball it with a tape measure. So we're at four inches on this side. And we're almost at four inches on this side. Um, is the strap is right where the fucking track bar needs to go. on this for a minute. What if I unlock, unhook this and bring it up here and away from that? frame in relation to the wheels and there isn't an easy way to do that. Um, large equipment in this building and pretty sure if I can find a place to anchor on it it ain't going nowhere well, that will be the magic question is where to pull on that so I think the answer is actually back behind the axle um, instead of up here where all this hodgepodge of steering shit is. So I'm gonna crawl back underneath here and hook up. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing in once I'm sure it's successful.
cargo strap here. avoid compressing the suspension in the process of doing this. Damn, I'm drowning in fucking cargo strap down here. But I think I got it. Alright, so now the trick is where on the passenger side do I grab? show you what I got did. But first, let me make sure it's in the right spot. We're at three and a half on the driver's side. That means we're going to be too far on this side. Well, we're about a quarter inch too far. So, let me take this under here and... right here anchored to where the mount attaches the frame and then I came over here and went around the back side of the shock mount and anchored the bottom of that and that gives me a nice clean uh, purchase here and go check that and uh so this is really unscientific but what i'm doing is i'm just kind of lining up the edge of the tire and then siding down the tape measure so it's about three and a half three and a half so we're right where we need to be now what I need to do is loosen I need to loosen this that's gonna have to come back at least an inch and adjust this until it fits in here so that's what I'm fixing to work on Oh, 
All right, let me recover from this. easier right now. Ouch, god damn it. Okay, so we're halfway between. I think three more. two more at this point so we'll check it after one good and it doesn't even look like it's gonna fight with me going back in that's kind of nice maybe I should have watched some more YouTube videos somebody else made before I start doing this piece of shit So we're getting to the point where I think we can get this in. Alright, 
I'm gonna stop and go look up the uh, torque setting for this and I'll be right back. Okay, this calls for 40 foot pounds, so that's what we're gonna bring it to. All right, and then over here, we're going to tighten this up. I don't think I have a wrench that size, but let me look and see. Well, what do you know? It's a one and a quarter, and I do happen to own a one and a quarter inch wrench. So we're just gonna snug that down. That'll keep this from wandering around. All right, that's that. Okay, yeah, and I've gotta get this uh, strap out of here, so let me crawl under here and do that. This won't be very exciting, but uh, hopefully showing you guys where to put this strap or, or, or what worked for me will help some of you, because this is kind of a difficult uh, area to strap anything on this vehicle. Okay, so the next thing that needs to be adjusted is the steering. Um, there's a couple issues with the steering. One of them is the steering wheel isn't pointed right at the But the other, and, I, and I'm going to just make a quick check to see if this is still where it's supposed to be. So three and three quarter versus Three and a half. I can live with it being a quarter inch off. I don't give a shit about that. Uh, the back is actually further off, but this almost looks normal. So, uh, the way the steering wheel alignment works, or the steering alignment, is I need to adjust the toe in, and really, this is going to be against um, the inside of the rims. And so, I think I'm going to cheat and use a laser tape measure. I don't have any better ideas. Um, I'm looking for a 32nd of an inch difference between front and back, and that's really hard to measure. Um, and I don't think we have it right now. Uh, so one of the options is to take the wheels off the Jeep, jack it up, and uh, align it that way. I am skeptical. skeptical. Uh, let me see where this is. Yeah, so that's way off now. That's an easy enough fix. Um, so let me go look at the process again in the manual because uh, it, my memory is it's kind of backwards. On how this goes. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this video here and I'm gonna do the alignment as its own video because it's gonna be different. I'm I'm gonna use the method that I'm reading on one of the four x four sites, um, and I'm gonna tell the factory manual to turn itself into toilet paper. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the next video, which is gonna be on doing the alignment.